Hi, Jim Sinesco, AFC International. Today I want to talk to you about an instrument that's been around a little while, but I don't think a lot of people know it exists. This is the Toxiray Pro PID version. This is a, an instrument that a lot of folks know it as an electrochemical sensor, single gas, like for carbon monoxide, H2S, chlorine, ammonia, SO2, NO2. But not a lot of folks, I don't think, know that there's a PID, photoionization detector version of it. Yep, in the PID, Toxiray Pro, I think if you're an industrial hygienist or safety professional involved with ex exposure, chemical exposures, your people at work, I think it's really a valuable tool. Now there's two different versions. There's the industrial standard unit, and that has a range between one to a thousand ppm, and there's no data logger. The industrial hygiene version has a range of 0 0.01 all the way up to 2000 ppm, and has a full-time data logger. So if I'm gonna be using this for exposure levels, all I have to do is put it on a worker, turn it on, put it on a worker, let them walk around, do their sampling, and then at the end of the day, go ahead and download it. Now I just turned it on. This is an industrial hygiene version, and it beeps at me and says, okay, I'm an industrial hygiene version, and it's gonna go through a warm-up self-test, and after a little about 30 seconds or so, it's gonna be ready to go. While we're waiting for that, I'll tell you about the alarm set points. They're all user adjustable. You can go from uh, low and high alarms, the dual alarms, and they have different cadences, If uh, the, the sound. If you have a low alarm, it's gonna be a beep, beep, beep. And if we're at a high alarm, it's gonna be beep, 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 a double cadence. So even though it's data logging, it's still gonna act as a safety device for the worker, and that's a great thing. In addition, it has a short-term exposure limit, 15 minute stell alarm. So we can actually set that to go off if we've exceeded any kind of higher concentration stell that you may come across or the worker may come across. And that's an important thing, right? We want them to make sure if they're exceeding high, high concentrations, they can get out. So you'll get a special separate stell alarm and the display will say stell alarm on it. The other thing you will see, it also has a time weighted average alarm. So you can set it up for the OSHA or NIOSH or ACGIH, uh, time weighted average, PEL, and let it go off an alarm when you've reached and exceeded that. So it kind of gives you lots of different ways. It has a light, a flash, and a vibrator alarm so you can hear it in high noise and see it in high noise uh, conditions. Now how does this thing work? Well, inside underneath this cap here, we have a, either a 10.6 or a 9.8 lamp. And instead of having a sample pump, like most of your Ray systems, uh, Mini Ray 3000s and Mini Ray 2000s back in the day, they had a pump, you pulled a sample across that sensor. Well, instead of a pump, there's a little microfan, and that little microfan pulls the air and the sample around where the worker is and brings it into that ionization chamber or the detector and the sensor. And then that's how it works. So again, this won't be used for confined space. You're gonna be using it more for personal monitoring. You wanna keep it in the breathing zone. Most of us breathe between here and here. And so that way, when we're working, it's actually taking a sample and protecting me but also doing the data logging is gonna be critical for the industrial hygienist and for you safety people involved with, with exposure monitoring. So anyway, it also can be used as a fixed monitor. You can put it out in an area, have a stationary monitor, come back, download the data and go, you know what, in this particular area by these machines, but this, this process area, we're getting high concentrations. Now, I was just at a, a plant and we were, we were detecting for acrylin. Now, Acrylin has a IDLH level of two part per million. The time weighted average is right around 0.2 to 0.3. So in those cases, in that type of work, I would have to go with the industrial hygiene version to get down to that low level. Now, how do we accurately detect concentrations that low when, we, when we're using calibration gas of 100 ppm? Most PIDs, as you know, or maybe you don't know, we use 100 ppm. It's the most accurate at that cal concentration. So if I'm gonna be looking at extremely low levels, I'm gonna to try to calibrate to the lowest level I can get cal gas for. So in that case, a couple of weeks ago, we used 10 part per million. If we get lower than that, that'd even be better. But at the time we had 10 ppm and we calibrated to that. So it's most accurate at that point. So that way we can get down to the low level. So by using calibration, uh, lower concentrations and um, lowering and using the industrial hygiene version, we're able to get those lower levels. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate, and I'm gonna demonstrate on this PID here where we have 100 ppm isobutylene. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on that gas. 
and it, it, this little adapter here does come with it. It's a calibration adapter. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on top. And you can see right away that concentration is getting really crazy, right? I'm giving it 100 ppm and my meter is reading 342 and climbing. Well, it's because I've employed a correction factor on this unit for acrylin. This just came right back from that acrylin application. Acrylin's correction factor is 3.9. So if I'm giving it 100, it should come up to about 390, plus or minus 10%. That's the accuracy precision of this unit. So you can see I'm at 169, and it's stabilizing. It might get up to 170. That's well within our 10% our there. And this also served as a, a good demonstration of correction factors and also a bump test. I just basically hit it with the gas to see if it's working. So um, that's 100 ppm. Now, again, if I had the correction factor back to the normal isobutylene, it would only have gone up to 100. So that's where we use correction factors. Now, that's an interesting thing, though. If you're going to use a correction factor greater than 1, other things in the area will also be magnified by that. So one of the limitations of PIDs is that it's going to see lots of things, right? It's not specific towards one chemical or the other. But anyway, um, now, since I've given it such high concentration, I've exceeded the time-weighted average and I've exceeded the style. So it's an alarm, and this tells me or the worker, hey, I need to get out of an area. So again, it's, it's a dual purpose unit. It's doing the data logging, but also keeping the worker safe. So the only way we can get out of these types of alarms is to shut it off and get out of the area. So we would never want to shut off a unit in the work environment, but certainly uh, for this demonstration, we're going to shut it off so we can talk a little more. All right, so that brings up the question, what lamp energies do I have? Well, 9.8 and 10.6 interchangeable. So things like benzene, toluene, xylene, ethyl benzene, volatile organic compounds. And again, what's a volatile organic? Things that want to get up and go at room temperature, right? High vapor pressure. So in other words, those kind of things we're, we're really concerned with because at normal room temperatures or even lower, that gas and vapor is going to be moving out and getting people exposed. But things like, like um, uh, isopropyl alcohol and ethanol, those are fine. But things like methanol, it won't see because the lamp energy isn't high enough. Again, PIDs work off that ionization potentials of chemicals. If our lamp energy is only 10.6, we can't ionize gases and vapors or chemicals above that 10.6. So that would be like methanol, formaldehyde, methylene chloride. We can't see those because those ionization potentials are higher than the lamp availability for the Toxiray Pro. So um, keep that in mind when you're doing your monitoring. It's a general detector, meaning it's going to detect lots of chemicals in your area. It will not tell you one from the other. It's just going to read a total VOC. And as you saw, some have different sensitivities compared to that Cal gas. Um, it has 190 correction factors built into the memory, so I can pull them up and, and it'll actually make the correction factors for you. Um, it has a T90, time of response of 15 seconds. So in other words, in 15 seconds, it's going to be to about 90% of true concentration. So it's a very fast detector. Other sensors aren't quite that fast. So the PID is very fast. So we have a very fast response and a very fast recovery. Um, it gets about 12 hours on its runtime on its lithium ion battery. It is a rechargeable system. It comes with this cradle. And we put the unit in the cradle and that's going to do the charging for you. It will recharge a completely dead battery system in less than four hours. It has a release back here, and out it comes. Now, we also communicate using this cradle, and this is where the contacts are for dumping our data and also for programming our instrument. It's through these contacts through the bottom base of the charger. The kit also comes with a comms cable, which is a mini USB that would go right here. The kit also has a wall plug jack, and a tool to, to help clean and do the maintenance on that photoionization detector. You want to keep that PID clean. So this little tool will come in handy when you're doing the maintenance portion. And of course, the calibration uh, adapter that we talked about earlier. So great little unit, Toxiray Pro PID. Comes in 10698. Great for volatile organic compounds. Two versions, industrial hygiene version with full data logger, standard version. Uh, no data logger. Um, there's a third option too, wireless. This one's a wireless unit. Um, you really can't tell the two, you know, the difference between the two. You just got to look at the icon. There's a wireless icon in here. That would work with a 900 megahertz mesh 
uh, radios uh, for your area rays, your Prairie Guardian software, and also Echo View point-to-point um, uh, -point detection. So anyway, Jim Sinesco for AFC International. If you have any questions on Taxi Ray Pro, PIDs in general, what it sees, what it won't see, uh, we'd like to see a demonstration, give us a call. We do have 10 of these units on the shelf right now. We're trying to move them before the end of the year in, in inventory, but please give us a call. We'd love to work with you. Uh, Jim Sinesco, AFC International. Give us a call, 800-952-3293, or find us on the web, www.afcintl.com. Thank you for watching. Be safe.